Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Alice and myself, we want to welcome you in that wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we go back into God's Word to be instructed on how to live the fullness of life in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, in, in the past couple of weeks, and I think maybe three weeks ago, we looked at, uh, here in the Sermon on the Mount, we looked at the kingdom of God, and we talked about the kingdom of God defined by its, by its borders, its language, and its culture. And today in this session, we're going to talk a little bit about the currency of the kingdom of God. Because Interesting. It, because it <laughs> indeed does have a currency. Yes. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Alice if you will ask the Lord's blessing upon our time together. Yes, I will. Father, we come before you. We praise you. We give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you glory. You are worthy of our praise. And Father, we ask that you just speak to us through this study today. We ask that your word just fill our hearts and fill our mouths and that we would obey what you command us to do. Because we love you. Amen. Amen. Uh, once again, before we start, I just want to remind you that, that as usual, I like to say, don't trust me. Test me. That's what I say against the Word of God. And, and certainly I, I pray that you have a Bible with you for a Bible study. That's a good thing to have in a Bible study. Absolutely. But it's also might be a good idea to have a pencil and paper or, you know, just so you can take notes. And, uh, and if you have any questions, you can write us at office at BibleTalk.com. Amen. Please do. Don't, yes. don't hesitate to do that. We'd like to hear from you. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go on, as I said, we're going to look at, we're, we're continuing on in the Sermon on the Mount. Because that's, I mean, when we started this program in search of Christianity, which now, my goodness, is like 70 weeks ago, a year and a half ago, is that? Yeah, it seems, cool. it seems like it. Yeah. We talked about how so much of what is common in Christianity today is not normal to Christianity. Right. And I think normal Christianity is defined by the teaching of Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount. Absolutely. Okay, so we've been looking at that. Now we're in the sixth chapter, and I'm going to start today in Matthew six sixteen, and I'm going to read through to verse eighteen. Jesus said, "Whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance so that they will be noticed by men when they're fasting. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full." But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Notice that Jesus said, not if you fast, but when you fast. So the assumption on his part is that we, as Christians, in our normal Christianity, will fast. Will fast. Okay. We were, we were talking with our dear brother Tim, who has opened his house for us to stay in when we're here in the Saddleworth, England, in the northwest of England. Area. During one of our morning Bible studies with him. We do a, a morning Bible study with him most mornings. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about fasting, and he said, well, he can't fast. Now, Tim has a medical condition where he has to have regular intake of food, okay? Mm -hmm. But he, like most people, like most Christians has kind of been misled and misinformed by so much teaching in the church today that this is all about food. Mm -hmm. It's not about food. The issue is self-denial and hypocrisy. That's what Jesus is dealing with here. I, because of the fact that the church always, when they speak about fasting, it's always referred to food. As, right. Nothing, nothing more than that. And so much of that teaching is just uh, not right, by the yes. way. But that, that's, again, you get into the Word and see, right? Because it becomes the tradition of men as opposed to the commandment of God. And that, that tradition of men always leads to hypocrisy. Fasting is not about impressing others with your spirituality, but about self-denial and the practice of self-denial 
that is not necessarily about food. Mm -hmm. Think about this. I mean, I'm going to go back in time. Uh, 750 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, when, when the Lord God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, and here's what God said, Is this not the fast which I choose, to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke? Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house? When you see the naked to, to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light will break out like the dawn, and your recovery, recovery will speedily spring forth, and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 8. Amen. You know, these are the things that God says. Here's a fast thing that I'm choosing, all right? And I said to Tim, you know, look at that verse. Look at that part of the verse that says, bring the homeless poor into the house. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what he's done. Yes, he hello. Say hello to the homeless poor. <laughs> I mean, we're traveling. We live out of a suitcase. And it's a blessing that, that God would have Tim and put it on his heart to, to open his house to us. Amen. Again, it's about self-denial. It's about giving of yourself. Jesus, it says in the Gospel of Mark, it says, And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Mark 8, 34. You see, the practice of self-denial prepares the godly heart to hear these words of Jesus. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew six nineteen to 21, right? 19 to 21, is that what I said? Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, Matthew 19, 6 to 19 to 21. 19 to 21, yes. It's, I guess it's about what do you treasure? You see, we always treasure what's precious to us. Treasures are the things that you hold dear. And remember, we're called to appraise all things spiritually. So, storing things up in heaven makes your focus go on the things that are eternal. When you bless others, when you're sharing the gospel, doing good to others, not looking for return here on earth, doing things out of love, not out of obligation. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Doing things as unto the Lord. You see, back, Jesus said here earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, he didn't come to do away with the law. No. He came to fulfill the law. And he didn't take the law out of our lives no, he either. Didn't. What he took was the curse of the law out of our Praise lives. Praise God for that. Oh, it's, it's true. Because that was an obligation. You did it. You had to do this by obligation. You had to keep this law by... And you know what? You couldn't, couldn't do it. Do it. Couldn't it's do impossible it. to do it. Mm -hmm. But now, the Holy Spirit has come to lead us into all truth. And I'll tell you what the truth is. You can do it because you love Jesus. Amen. And you can do it because you love Jesus. You see, God searches our heart. You know? That's, isn't that what it says? God searches our heart. God searches and sees what's in our hearts. Whatever we speak, whatever we say, exposes our heart, exposes what's in our hearts to us and to others. All right? The good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good. And the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. Luke 6.45 We can hear what's in our hearts. And the eye of man will always turn to what he treasures, what's precious to him. I mean, cars, sports cars are your yes, treasure. Yeah. Every, I mean, you're going to be looking at every, for every sports car. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, this is obvious. But what you treasure will be what you focus on, all right? Which leads right into what Jesus said here in the Sermon on the Mount next. The eye is the lamp of the body. So then, if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If, then, the light in you is darkness, how great the darkness. What are, what are your eyes fixed on? 
What do you find yourself looking at all the time? Think about these words from the letter to the Hebrews. I'm going to read Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, now this is right after Hebrews 11, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Which is all about those quote-unquote faith heroes who truly lived by faith, That's right. pleasing God. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. And it goes on, but that's where our eyes are supposed to be fixed, because that should be our treasure. That should be the great desire of our lives, is Jesus Christ. Now, when you look around and appraise things spiritually, you will see things the way God sees them. And if you don't, the things of God will become foolishness to you. That's what Paul wrote to the Corinthians. The natural man cannot, does not and cannot accept the things of the Spirit of God because they're spiritually appraised. If you treasure God's love and approval, you'll be successful in what you do. If you treasure money, you will be a failure. I promise you that, measured by the things of God, because the things of God are true. So the question becomes, are we strong enough to do what's right in the eyes of God? To deny ourselves here on earth and store up our treasure in heaven and not on earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. So now I just want to mention, I'm sure if you follow us, so you know that Alice and I, uh, we kind of live on the road. We, we've traveled, been on five continents, and I think I've been to 55 countries. And So when it comes to currency... Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, we've used U.S. dollars, Canadian dollars, Mexican pesos, Belizean dollars, Guatemalan quetzals, Cameroonian, Central American francs, British pounds, European shekels. euros, shekels, Israeli sh new shekels, uh, you know, the uh, Kenyan shillings, Czech Republic crowns, Hungarian forints. I could go on and on and on, but you get you get the idea, right? We've had a lot of money go through our hands. <laughs> yeah, maybe not a lot in quantity, but a lot of different kinds, I promise you. So let's just focus on that for a moment. You see, greed, which is the love of money, mm -hmm. is idolatry. That's what it says in Colossians 3.5. So money becomes either a simple tool or it's an idol. Mm -hmm. And it will lead you, for the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith, and have pierced themselves with many griefs. 1 Timothy 6.10 See, it's supposed to be a tool. Money is supposed to be a tool. All right? Um, what's, what's a tool? Suppose you were a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. Suppose you have a hammer. You hammer, you build things, you construct, you, you make things for people, you serve people by making them. That's good. Yes. Or maybe you're a mugger and you use it to bonk people on the heads. Not good. And, it's not good, but it's the same thing. It is a tool. It's how you use it and what it means to you, right? Yeah. When we talk about wealth, now I'm going to talk about wealth. Now there's a difference between a desire for wealth and talking about money, right? When we talk about wealth, whatever a country calls that money, Jesus calls it mammon. That's right. It is the currency of the world mm -hmm. because... In Matthew 6, 24, as we go on, Jesus says, No one, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. He doesn't say that you should not. He says you cannot. It's impossible. Because the issue is about who you're going to serve. All right? Not long before the time, not long before the time that Jesus came and, and taught this message on the Sermon on the Mount, right? Mm -hmm. He had been in the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan, right? Yes, right. In a in a final now you know the temptations of Jesus. You can go to Matthew four and read these, but in a final mm -hmm. desperate attempt mm -hmm. to draw the Lord into sin, which he hadn't been able to do, right. this old serpent brought out his big gun. The temptation that has worked so well 
throughout mankind's history. Wealth. Yes. In Matthew 4, 8 and 9, it says, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to them, said to Jesus, All these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. Now there's a prosperity message, hey? Oh boy. But Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. Matthew 4.10 Serve him only. You're going to serve somebody. You know, you are, you are either going to be a slave of righteousness or a slave to sin. That's what the Word of God says. Okay, you're going to serve. But you choose who you will serve. Isn't that what Joshua said oh so many centuries ago? Yes. There in the wilderness, when he said to the people of God, he said, choose you this day who you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I'll say this one more time. I am still looking for the day when the men of God will be men and stand up and speak for their households, for their families, and make that proclamation, we will serve God. Thank you, Lord. I want to tell you today, this morning, and here's where I really want to get to. Those shekels, those dollars, those euros, those shillings, pounds, sterling. All those currencies. Those are the currencies of the world. The currency of the kingdom of God is faith. Amen. What do you use money for? You use money. Why do people desire money so much? Because they believe it will give them the things that they need mm -hmm. and, and the things that they desire. Mm -hmm. That's why they treasure money. Yes. Because it gives them the things they desire. Okay? Now, I was sharing the other day in a couple of different places, I was talking to people, and this should be more obvious to us today certainly than it was a generation ago. Everything in the world is binary. If you're watching this, you're watching it through the modern technology where everything, the computers, the digital phones, the iPhones, the Apple, all the, all the things in technology are run by a, by a, mach, a machine code that is made up of binary code, either one or zero. It's all made out of one or zero. Very simple. Now, it is. Yeah. It's, 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 almost, it's too simple to comprehend for right. most people, right? Exactly. But isn't that what Jesus was doing when he said, let your answer be yes or no? Yeah. It's binary. There's no middle ground there. There's no gray area in between. Your answer is either yes or no. no. There's no maybe in the Bible. No. By the same token, it's like, you know, it's either, it's either God or mammon. Right. There's no middle ground. You can't serve them both. You'll serve one and not the other. It's binary. Mm -hmm. Everything in this universe that God has created, there was darkness, and Jesus said, let there be, let, let there be light. Right. Everything that came into being came into being through, through him, the Word. Yeah. Right? Spoken into existence. Yeah. He didn't say, well, let's have a little you know, gradual sunrise. Mm -hmm. Went bang! Boom. From, light, from darkness to light. It's binary. Yeah. Your life is binary. You are either a child of God, or your father is the devil. There's no in-between. This should truly become recognizable to us. Because so many people, well, you know where it gets compromised? How about the church of Laodicea? In the church of Laodicea, Jesus said, you're neither hot nor cold. You're not binary, you're somewhere in between, you're lukewarm. And that lukewarm, and he says, because of that, he said, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Lukewarm comes from that mixture of hot and cold. I mean, you can take you take some hot water and take some cold, cold water and mix the two together, and you're going to get lukewarm. So you show me somebody who is hot for God on Sunday, cold on Monday, and I'll show you somebody who is lukewarm through life. Yes. You don't want to be there. <laughs> be one or the other. Be hot or cold. But be understand, you can't be in the middle, okay? You've got to choose. If you cho choose to serve, which is like love, you'll serve, you're going to serve the one you love. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you love money, it's you'll binary. Serve. You'll be a slave to it. If you love money, you'll hate God. Oh, yeah. It's binary. Yeah. 
No hate God. You say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The word says so. Why do you think John wrote in his first letter, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John 2, 15. How does this happen? Well, I'll tell you how it happens. You know, it says in John, that same letter, he wrote about how this present world is in the power of the evil one. And that evil one is a liar by nature and the father of lies. Think about these words from Jesus. Again, in Matthew, Matthew 13, I'm going to read verse 22. And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word. And the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. The word becomes unfruitful. Because you believe the lie. You know, I, I, I probably have shared this before, but we have dear friends that were financial counselors for Christians, mm -hmm. helping them to take and, and use their money wisely. And we had a meeting with them years ago. And we were in Sarasota, Florida, and we were at a, a, a club and we had lunch together. And I guess there were about six of us, Alice and I, and maybe four or five other guys. And during the course of this, one dear brother, you may have heard of him, Gary Moore, who's written a number of good books, I mean great books, on Christians and finances. In the course of the conversation, I don't know what brought it up, Gary said, well, you know, the world says money talks. And I said, yeah, Gary, that's absolutely right. And, and you know what? Jesus said the same thing. And he, he looked at me quite strangely and he said, what? I said, yeah, Jesus said money talks. He just says, it lies. The deceitfulness of riches. And that's the truth. <laughs> but what happens is, when, when you have that, it chokes the word and the word becomes unfruitful in your life. But I'm going to tell you something today and I promise you it's true. If you let that happen, your riches will also become unfruitful. They will not deliver the things you need. They will not deliver the things you desire. Because they will rust away. A thief will come and steal them. They will crumble into dust. Okay? Think, think about this. And you, you know this is true. I was sharing this just again the other day. Talking about I don't know, Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes in his time. Now he was an industrialist. He was involved in entertainment. He was involved in aviation. I, I, he was certainly one of the richest men in the world at, in his time. And yet, he died a hermit. I mean, he came out of the, the, the desert one time in a daze and lived in a hotel that he owned in a, in, in a penthouse in Las Vegas and refused to come out. Wealth will fail you. I mean, how many times do you see people who have achieved, quote-unquote, fame and fortune that is so desirable to everybody, and they're dead of a drug overdose, mm. or they've committed suicide. I mean, this happens all the time. Why do you think that is? It's because the things that they trusted in failed to satisfy. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you something. You'll never be able to hate God and live with yourself. No. When you've made yourself an enemy of God, you'll become an enemy with yourself. I'm telling you the truth. And this is why Jesus said, no, go on here in Matthew 6, 25. He said, for this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on it. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? The kingdom of God and the world have currencies. Okay? Now, like I said, money in different, in the worldly money in different currencies, in the different kingdoms of the world, dollars, pounds, yens. They promise that they'll supply all of your needs and give you all your desires. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, isn't it? Now, it's not wrong to want your needs met. No. Especially, I mean, I talked about the men. You want to supply for your, for your household and everything. There's nothing wrong That's with that. responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's not wrong to have desires. It's just a matter of what they're fixed on. All right? The kingdom of the kingdom of the currency of the kingdom of God is faith. Because God has promised to supply all of your needs and to give you your desires. But it comes through faith. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote to the Philippians and said, My God shall supply all your needs according to 
is riches and glory in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Not according to your riches, according to his riches. Well, what does he have? Well, wow. the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, all the cattle out of a thousand hills. It's all his. And he'll supply every need that you have out of those riches. That's what it says, Philippians 4.19. And then in Psalm 37, God says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. But I'm going to tell you another truth. He wants to be the desire of your heart. And when you truly delight yourself in the Lord, He will become the desire of your heart. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to binary again. If you're worried about those things, the Word of God will be choked to death. Mm -hmm. And you'll wither away spiritually. And most likely in the natural too. Yes. You've got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. All the rest will be added unto you. I mean, this is where he started in the, in the Beatitudes when he said, you know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, mm -hmm. for they shall be satisfied. It is the desire of God, your heavenly Father, who loves you so much, to bless you with all of these things that you need. Mm -hmm. And yet so many people, they're out there struggling for a paycheck, because if they don't have that paycheck, they're going to die. They're going to start. You know, there's nothing wrong with working. But your purpose for being out there is to be an ambassador for Christ, to bring the knowledge of His presence into every place, to bring the love of God into the lives of others. You're not dependent on a job for your needs. You're dependent on God for your needs. Hallelujah. You shouldn't be dependent on those the money that you can get in a paycheck to supply the desires that you have. God will supply your desires when you allow Him to change your desires. And you will be satisfied. That's the truth. Listen, I just want to read a couple of verses to you here. Paul wrote to Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 7 and 9. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and covering with these, we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. You believe the word of God? I have had this, I have said, unfortunately, a number of times in the past few months, as we have traveled uh, a lot, I'm finding very few spirit-filled Bible-believing Christians who actually believe the Bible, yes. who have a Christian worldview, who approach the things of daily life, you know, <laughs> who appraise things through. spiritually, <laughs> the Bible, the Word of God. Peter says God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. In this, word. It's, this is more than just spirituality. Mm -hmm. This is God's instruction on how to live life. What kind of life? Abundant life. Mm -hmm. Joy-filled life. Amen. That's the kind of life that this, this Word of God is instruction for. Because that's God's desire for you. Don't, just, just think about these. I'm going to read from the book of Revelation. I want to look at a couple of congregations here, gatherings of people. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. That's what Jesus spoke to the church in Smyrna in Revelation 2.9. And then he said to the church at Laodicea, Because you're lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Father, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord God, that we would see what true riches are. That we would see what true abundant life is. That we would see the way that you have planned to meet all of our needs and give us our desires, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to desire above all to serve you. And Father, I ask that in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Till next time, God bless you and goodbye.